Hey yo, what is going on Turf Team? Today we are here to talk about some MUT16 investing strategies. Uh, so what I really want to cover with you guys today are some basic techniques that you can use at the beginning of the year for MUT uh, to build your coins up, right? So a lot of this is obviously going to be uh, based around investing, obviously. Uh, and there's a couple factors that really going to determine how well you can invest and how deep you can invest. Obviously, buying packs is the easy way out, right? So if you buy packs, you're going to get cards. If you get cards, you're going to get coins, so on and so forth. You know, and I, I truly believe that day one is the best day of the year to ever open packs. So if you're going to open packs all year, this is a pretty good time. Um, day one to me being... Uh, EA Access Day 1, since I'm going to be starting my my campaign on the Xbox One. But for the PS3, for people, uh, this would just be the day the game releases. Um, so we want to go over a few things. And the last caveat is that right now none of us really know what these rewards programs are and what they entail. Are we going to get coins from these? Uh, how many coins are we going to get? What are we going to get for doing all the master challenges, all the solos, Super Bowl wins, etc. Like th nobody knows right now. Uh, at least at this point, no one knows. So there's a lot up in the air with how much coinage we're going to have to be able to invest with. So I want to go over a few things. I'm going to actually base this on uh, my experience last year. Um, and typically, you know, trends are historical. So year over years will happen. So what we're going to notice here, we're going to first talk about the gold Antonio Cromartie card last year. Uh, so you'll see that kind of opening day, we'll call it, uh, the card kind of came out around 12K, right? And then let's just say about two weeks in, we see that the card hit its kind of price spike uh, around 22, 23K, right? So if you pull packs and you get this card day one not this exact card obviously this is what 15 card but something for 16 the prices are going to spike at a certain point in september and then you're going to see kind of a drastic fall off as things happen right and so the graph you guys will see you'll see a lot of little spikes and all that and a lot of the spikes really are um when cards go into sets so the price is going to spike up a lot but what you want to do is sell the card as close to its highest selling price as possible and then buy it back later if you want to use it or just completely upgrade. Uh, the next card we're going to see here is the gold Charles Woodson. Again, he kind of started out around the same price, right around 10 k uh, His price peaked a little early, right around the beginning of September. And then, again, a very steep drop-off, you know, not too late after. Um, one thing you guys definitely want to do is these gold cards you probably want to ditch them by october right we you'll see this trend throughout the graphs uh and lastly we see here our gold drc from last year uh his graph looks a little different uh because he actually was pretty cheap at first because i think people didn't realize how good he was so this shows kind of the progression of how people thinking like wow this card is great he's he's as good as so many of the elite corners and then again, his price spikes. So let's say uh, we see his low point here. We'll call it 5K. So if you invested 50K in DRCs, so you had 10 of them, and then you sold it around his highest price point of 200K minus a 10% tax. So you're talking about 130K profit on some gold DRC cards. So that's pretty good. Um, and you're getting this return on investment within a couple weeks. Uh, up next, we have Jamal Charles. Now here's a card where his price obviously it spiked a little but it wasn't a gigantic spike so he was around 125 looks like he got up to around 160 but then he held his price a lot longer you know he was a, one of the top tier running backs and uh, what you'll want to watch from the elite cards uh, especially position players is that their price will definitely fall when corresponding team of the week content comes out so this is one thing you want to kind of recognize that running backs like this may not be something you really want to invest in. You know that someone's going to break off a big game week one, two, three, and your 88, 89, 90 overall running back 
it's just not that highly rated anymore when the team of the week 91 comes out uh, and then his price will drop and then you'll be able to pick him up for cheaper so if you get a card like this uh, use it for about a week or two then definitely dump it and then you know just be patient uh, next card we want to look at is Elite Pat Pete. So we all know year after year corners are extremely important and Pat Pete was no different. I actually um, had this card very early on right around when his price was very low. I think I bought him for around 70k. Uh, I used him for hmm, three weeks, four weeks and sold him for 280k. So I got four weeks of use out of a card and made 210k profit which is huge, you know, and obviously this this is not a card you can necessarily invest in. Um, unless you have a bunch of coins, you're not going to have a hoard of Pat Peets, right? But it's definitely something that if you know when to play the market, if you pull an elite card, what to do with it and when to sell it, really. Uh, last card we'll look at is the Indomitian Sioux. Again, here, uh, his value wasn't as high as the other elites that we've looked at so far, but his return on investment if you could invest or pick at least one up was still great right going from give or take 50k to 125k within the matter of two weeks so this is a really good investment strategy that you guys want to pick up on and want to learn find the cards that people are really going to like and use grab them store them sell them about a week or two later and then just kind of cash out same thing with these elite cards. You want to make sure that you get rid of all your base elites uh, October sometime at the latest, really, because you know, you're going to have the team of the week. You're going to have BCAs, probably. Uh, you're going to have Road to the Playoffs, probably. So, you know, don't have a 200K card, use it and sit on it, and then all of a sudden, two weeks later, it's worth 50K and you lost 150K, you know. It's this type of investing that's really going to keep you ahead of the game and keep you going forward. So I hope you can use some of these strategies. I have some other little strategies for myself uh, that I'll be doing, um, you know, not necessarily anything crazy or amazing, but I do like to work the block a lot. I do have a lot of investment strategies that I will use that I don't really discuss with people because I think it really helps me out to get ahead. And if I told everyone, then everyone would be able to do it and then no one would be able to <laughs> do it anymore so uh that's basically that uh so i'm i'm just hyped and ready for these cards to come out and the game to come out you know i'm i'm really excited and i know we've got a shit ton of good content coming for you guys this year uh you know over at maddenturf.com and maddentips.tv so you guys are gonna really like it you know you're gonna like you guys you guys are gonna love it I promise, but that's all I have for this today. Uh, I'll do a little more investigation.